All right, anyone who has an empty seat next to them, raise their hand. You guys can come on in. <laughs> I, I, I will uh, address the, 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 the problem in the room right now. The pizza will be here shortly. <laughs> As a uh, normal, it's running just a few minutes late. You know, you get what you pay for. So, all right, well, it is now 6 o'clock, and this is the last talk of the day. And I am Stephen Hilt. And I'm a, <laughs> and I'm a regular, and um, I'm a senior threat researcher with Trend Micro's forward-looking threat research team, where I look into e-crime investigations and general security research. Um, this is part of my research into some APIs that I started about say, a year and a half ago, and it's the evolution of where we were with a proof of concept to monitoring and uh, monitoring for activity. Uh, Lord helped me out a bunch on reversing some of the very complex samples that were, you know, packed in standard packers. <laughs> it's not that complicated. No. So. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Lord. I'm also part of the forward-looking threat research team of Trend Micro. I'm also a senior threat researcher. Um, I've been working with Trend like seven years now. So first thing I was looking at was we started this all, this all started because as people are taking on uh, using chat platforms and other things more commonly, uh, I actually started migrating our DEF CON group uh, from an IRC channel to Slack just to see if we could get more interest. And then I started playing with the API because I tend to be like a couple years behind and APIs are still funny to me. I didn't really figure out all, everything about them. So I really wanted to look into it. So in about three years, you're going to see some machine learning uh, talks from me. <laughs> <laughs> but the, there are many types of APIs. Um, you've probably heard of Java APIs uh, or interface with classes. Uh, objects talk to each other within Java, so that's a coding language API. There's also many other types of APIs. Um, there's the web APIs, which are primarily used for this purpose uh, of this research. Uh, there's SOAP, RPC, and REST, RESTful API. Um, REST be being the most popular of APIs uh, for this implementation. Um, as I started digging into it, I started learning that RESTful APIs, nobody really knows what one is other than it's not a RESTful API because there's always somebody who says something. So as I mentioned, we started looking into uh, using Slack for our DEF CON group uh, locally to Chattanooga. And so I knew a lot about it, but I wanted to see what other platforms there are and which one would be the best one for us to investigate to start looking at this. Um, so under the chat programs, there's Slack, Telegram, and Discord. Uh, those are three we're actually going to talk about today. Um, they're self-hosted chat clients, such as HipChat and Mattermost. And then the more techni or more classical ones that we've seen before, which is Twitter and Facebook. Um, so then we broke it down to which ones had kind of a, which ones were the most appealing to possibly cyber criminals to be utilizing. And we looked at a couple requirements, some of which, how, what did it take to register? Uh, what was the storage capacity? Does it have a real-time API? Um, and is it cloud-hosted or self-provided? You gotta host it. Um, Slack has the five gig to unlimited, five gigabytes of storage for your free account, unlimited on a paid account. Uh, we actually ran into this problem recently because of all the funny memes we post that I had to purge them all out. <laughs> and so we hit a five gig limit a couple months ago after a year and a half, so that's not too bad. Um, the file size limit is one gig, where in Discord it's eight megs. And Telegram was a one and a half gigs, and both Discord and 
Telegram allow unlimited even on their free accounts. Um, Slack, you can use a 10 minute email address at the time of this, I think they might have changed a little bit of that. Um, to register a team, Discord allows 10 minute emails as well. Um, Telegram requires a, a phone number to, to register it. And it, they're pretty smart about it. You, we've you, tried to use um, VoIP phone uh, numbers as well as you know just burner phone numbers, and I think we even tried to use some um, SIM cards from, from the Philippines, and they're not working either. Um, so that was interesting to figure all that out, considering Telegram is, as you'll find out, where the cyber criminals are actually hanging out, but you have to use almost a real number to get into it. So we decided overall that we were going to just use Slack just because I was the most familiar for the, the proof of concept. We've done some in Mattermost, and we actually post a video on our YouTube channel uh, that has a demonstration in Mattermost uh, using it as a command and control. But I did start this back in 20, uh, early of 2016. Um, and then we wanted to see also when, when malware actually started using these. So why would a cyber criminal use an API for command and control? Uh, <laughs> the reasons are it's easy to use. It is stealthy in these cases. It's over TLS. Um, it's difficult to block. Um, especially, when, especially when you're um, when a company is using it for um, for their chat platform. Um, like um, seventy percent of the Fortune 100 companies are using it. Yeah, so, it's uh, seventy percent of Fortune 100s are, according to Slack's website, are using Slack. Um, we know that using APIs is, for command and control is not new. It's been done before. What is like such as the Twitter API, GitHub API, and things like that. What makes this more interesting is it is a real-time API. Uh, so instead of require relying on a little bit of latency to have some actions, you can directly interface. said we've looked into Slack, we've looked at what had been done before, and of course, are there any pre-existing libraries I can utilize and not have to code a bunch more? And of course, there had been a lot done in Slack because everybody had to write, to me had to write some meme bots and other bots so we could look into how that was being done, how that was being performed, and any of the code we could reuse and just ease of use. You guys come. So we'll take a little break here. I'm sure everyone's mind is exploding with all this knowledge. <laughs> um, but the pizza has now come, so feel free to come up and grab some slices. Um, looks like uh, we got ripped off on that pizza. <laughs> What's that? I'm always the pizza threat. And Matt's pizza team? Yes. Uh, now we get some more people. Hey, come on in. There's I mean, pizza. I mean, <laughs> uh, this is better than last year. It's eight minutes late instead of 30 minutes late, so I'm getting better at this. So when you're, when you're uh, providing your feedback, yes, remember which, which talk provided pizza. I just want to watch the video of this. Yeah, I'm sure everyone on the live stream is having a lot of fun out there. No, I didn't touch the pizza. You saw Ronnie bring it in. So thanks for Reed and Ronnie for getting it and bringing it here. Oh, and I think Brian drove, so. 
So we're going to just continue while you guys get your pizza. Um, so first step of this was to set up a Slack team. And then the second step was to integrate with the API. Um, what we did was Slack has these things called test and tokens for testing. And at the time, that's what they're called. Now they're called legacy tokens. Uh, but you can still generate one. They're, they start with, uh, as you see here, XOXP, and then a string of numbers um, divided by dashes. Uh, you can actually search this in GitHub and find a bunch of Slack keys. Uh, yeah. um, there's also a lot of things rolling around in um, you know, VirusTotal and things like that where you can find other things of legitimate software that hard-coded their keys into their applications. Uh, this is becoming a very popular way to get support and chat, chat with a support representative is over a Slack channel. Uh, so it's becoming very, very popular to do this, which is one of the reasons why this is hard to block and hard to mitigate. But we did write some Yara rules and have them running still to this date and keep looking for things doing, uh, having these tokens hard-coded inside of them. Then what we did was we designed a little flowchart that's super simple because it's command control. So we get command, we control it. So uh, it's a typical flowchart of how this was working, how we designed it within Slack. And the next, the next step was to obviously just code up. Um, so first thing you do is you create channels. So what I did was for each instance of a new machine joining, that machine made a, a, a channel of its host name. So then you could go to each individual host name and, and file commands. And then originally how I started this was I, I didn't play with the real time, so, uh, the real time pieces. Uh, you can actually sit there and every time look for the last message in Slack. And then so you, you look for the last message and then respond to that. And then I started playing with, once I got that working, I played with the real, uh, with the web socket and then scrapped all that other code that was useless and not needed because once I had the socket, I just listened to the socket and perform actions based off the socket. Um, so then on the second example is the, it's what they call the real time messaging or it's their web socket. Um, so you make a, a request to get a socket and then you just connect to it. Um, in theory, you're supposed to every so often check to see if it's valid. However, I ran it for several weeks and I never needed to reinitiate a socket. It just hung open. Um, it's probably hard to see. Maybe not. I don't know. It's hard for me to see on this little presenter view. But, but what this is, is as a defender, you're probably thinking um, you're looking at the slack messages.com and you're thinking, well, that's how I'm going to flag on it. Is that's how the API is looking for the web web socket because that's how it gets its Slack messages.com is what you connect to. Um, but sadly, the application, the, everything uses their web sockets. So if you use the web browser or you use the downloadable client, it uses the same methods as just my Python script did. So. And this is kind of where we're just made some basic commands, printed out the options. Um, so I did ls, uh, git file, change directory, run a specific OS command. Uh, I could push a file to it, grab a screenshot, and just close the command. So that's just an example. We can do a lot more uh, just based off of how much you wanted to code. So again, this was a proof of concept. So now we're going to kind of step through some of the commands so you can see them. Here's an LS. And, and of course, the, the screenshots here are from me running it on a Linux box. I did get it, it works on a Windows box because it's just compiled Python at that point in time, or just run Python. So as you can see, here's that. This is get, getting the syslog file. You upload it to Slack. It returns back the URL in which you can view it. 
There it is. So you could use anything from here to get any file you wanted, the Etsy password, Etsy shadow, any of the files that you're looking for and interact with the system. And this is a screenshot. Again, again, it's on an Ubuntu system. So there's the screenshot. This did work on Windows, but I don't have the screenshot. I don't know why. But so in reviewing Slack, um, they do have in terms of service that you cannot use. You may not transmit any viruses or any other computer programming that may damage, detrimentally interfere with potential inter, inter what? Yeah, intercept and <laughs> expedite any system or data, which is cool because you know every criminal is going to read the terms of services and agree to it. So at least Slack's got us on that one. <laughs> I, I will say out of all of them, and um, we'll probably get that again when you get down to read. Tele Discord had something about the same. Telegram has nothing. So obviously that's why the cyber criminals are going towards Telegram. It's not in their terms of service. <laughs> and kudos to Slack team. There's not malware on, on their platform right now. Yeah, as, as of the time of writing the paper, and as time of this, uh, this talk, we have not observed any malware actually using Slack. So what we'll have to do is now is dive into the other platforms where we can actually show malware has been abusing them. Uh, first, we'll, we'll talk about Discord. So um, for Discord, so this one is a, this one is Discord from My Little Ponies. So we just um, searched for Discord picture and this one came up first. So like Slack, um, Discord um, uses API and um, based on their website, their main, their main targets are the gamers. So they wanted to replace TeamSpeak maybe. Um, and instead of using web sockets, they're using web books. So you can easily interact with, um, with it, but um, the pro, um, one limitation is you cannot view the messages from webhooks, which you can just post it. Um, and again, um, we found uh, malwares, malware that are hosted on Discord and some malware that, that uses Discord for exfiltration. So one of which, one of which was um, a coin miner. Um, it's hosted on Discord. Um, since um, Discord uh, main target is gamers, so an attacker can pretty much um, use the 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 machine of the gamers. So since most of the the machines of the gamers are bumped up in in their specs. Um, one thing to note here is that um, even though they used Discord as a download for the second stage malware. They didn't use Discord um, as their CNC. Um, they pretty much created a new C2 um, to um, ping back to them um, if someone is infected. Um, and at the time of this research, um, we've noticed that the C2 is already down, probably by taken down, taken down by LEA or AV. So if they could have used Discord, maybe um, could be working. Yeah, the one, one thing with Discord is we observed them using a lot of their hosting malware in Discord. And luckily, Discord is very uh, responsive. When you email to Discord security group, they take it down uh, fairly quickly. Oh. <laughs> it's the p pizza threat. Pizza break it, or uh, pizza break. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing. That, uh, that, uh, yeah. Uh. Uh.
There's one over there. Hmm? It's a Thunderbolt, so EGA. Okay. Okay. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Alex, Sorry, you can come up and get some pizza. Mike, you can get some pizza. All right. What's that? Yeah, it's 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 uh, gluten and lactose free. But yeah, what I was saying was, yeah, go for it. Um, what I was saying was that there's a lot of malware being hosted. Um, I think in the appendix of our paper, which we'll link to you later, uh, there was like 400 some odd samples that we observed um, in just a short time period. We stopped really monitoring too hard on that. But they are responsive uh, to remove anything, and so kudos to them on that one. So another one, another malware is a uh, Roblox um, cookie stealer. Um, it uses webhook to exfiltrate the data. Um, so um, this one is pretty much straightforward. It's just grab the cookie from from the process. Uh, it searches for the process and parses the argument on, of the Roblox process and sends back the um, session cookie to the via API. Does, does anyone have kids that play Ro, uh, Roblox? Okay, so this one became very important to me because my kids have started play, pay, uh, playing, and so now I want to learn how I can steal their, uh, some Robux for them. Um, it actually, this ties in really well to a paper that we released last year about how game currency, gown, game currency laundering. Um, so in the paper we referenced that as well, so if you didn't read up on that and want more information on it, uh, just if you can't find it, reach out to us and we'll get it to you. Um, but it's really interesting about how, in this case, uh, the actor is stealing a cookie, which then they can take the Robux out of your account and then sell the gold. Sell the, yeah. yeah. So um, this one is pretty much more advanced than that we saw on the first one, because the first one just run and sends uh, the session cookie. This one um, replaces the original um, Robux binary, and every time you run Robux, it will just send the updated session cookie back to him. So what we did, we just patched the binary and tried to send it back to us, so that works. It's interesting to note that even Roblox itself puts that don't share that because you can steal your Robux. <laughs> It's okay. also interesting that they did hijack it out of the process, mm -hmm. um, not just actually using the, the browser cookie, because it actually does differ. Yeah, another one. This one hijacks the browser cookie. Yes, this one does. Um, the other um, thinks much better, because if he does the browser cookie, um, any platform could be infected, so. Um, Again, this one is um, using webhooks to exfiltrate the data back to him. Um, we found this specific um, toolkit being sold for a dollar of Bitcoin. Um, I think we haven't attributed the guy on this one, but... Yeah, the other one, um, it's probably the same person. Uh, we don't know. But on the other one, they made under uh, forum posts on a gaming forum in which they were trying to trick people that it was legitimate software. They even gave virus total links and said, no, look, it's clean and all these other things and said it's, it's good and people would reply back, well, it just sits there and hangs on my machine and doesn't do anything. And they're like, no, it's, it's really good, run it again. <laughs> and, and things like that. Um, this is on the Dream Marketplace. Uh, where we found it, but we found it on other places at the time. Uh, I believe we found it on... I think... Um, Kyle, where do we find it? <laughs> no, we found it a month ago after this one. Yep. So, but it's being sold in the underground for a dollar. Mm -hmm. So it's really cheap, easy to implement. And... So easy to implement. Um, 
I don't know if they realize, but they could also steal it on different domains. Um, they just need to point the domain, the website, then change the target cookie that they wanted to steal. So, yep. And also, um, if the guys that wanted to use this, they don't need to pay a dollar because they just need to find a sample and change the change the script basically. Um, apparently, this um, this specific malware is also hosted on um, Chrome Extension Store. Um, we notified um, Google Chrome on it, and they take it down it uh, very quickly. Uh, yeah, and much like what Lord presented earlier, uh, we sent it to our, we changed it and sent it to ourselves just to verify it's doing what it was doing. Uh, you can then take this cookie, apply it, and log in as that authorized user. Um, there was lots of talk in uh, the same gaming forum on this browser extension because it's marketed as a trader, so you can trade your Robux with other people, um, except for even some of the comments on the browser extension plugins themselves for saying that people were stealing their money. Um, so it took about, I think, a week, and Google had taken it off the Chrome store. So next we're going to talk about Telegram. This is where things get really interesting. <laughs> Telegram is a similar functionality to Slack. Uh, you have to sign up with mobile now, I think, too. You can't just sign up in the browser. So it forces you to even use your mobile browser and things like that. So I guess you could point it to m.telegram.org, com, whatever it is. Um, this is heavily used by criminals for discussions. Uh, there's lots of things going on. In fact, it was, I think last year, some news organization did a interview with a guy who had a blurred face. I don't know who he was, in London. And they were talking to people in the uh, in Telegram um, and trying to help plan where the next bombing was to then turn over, uh, to turn it over to them, to the law enforcement to go grab them. When they went to go, they're supposed to meet them up for supplies and things like that. So it's, it's, a, it's not a very nice place. It's not really something that should be allowed in corporations, in my opinion. So this one should be an easy one to mitigate. Uh, the interesting thing is there's a separate URL for, from the API than clients. And here's an example. Um, on OSX, it's osx.telegram. And on Windows, it's windows.telegram. The API is api.telegram. So that's for, for the clients, the browsers, I think, API. So first, we're going to talk about kill disk ransomware. This is not something we actually found initially. Um, but we were tipped off to it and included it in this research. ESET's the one who found it, and I'm going to probably assume a uh, incident response uh, in Ukraine. As you see it here, it goes to api.telegram.org. This was all coded in Python and then compiled and then reversed back. So you're going to see, um, you know, decompiled uh, variable names. So from there, you're going to notice this looks a lot like the things I implemented in my proof of concept code. <laughs> You're allowed to run a command. Uh, CMDD, I have a, something, I'll, I'll get onto that one on the next one. I don't remember exactly what it was. Um, you can get a photo, get a document, uh, force a check into itself or back to the server, uh, get the time, and SS is screenshot. So much allowed to take screenshots. Um, so CMDD was executes the commands, but do not uh, do not send the results back to the chat. That's what it was. Kill disk ransomware is interesting because it's ransomware. It uh, was 222 bitcoins to um, you know get your files back. I don't remember anybody ever getting their files back because nobody was paying 222 bitcoins per machine. Um, but if it's true ransomware, why do you need to run these commands? You don't. It's more or less a wiper at this point, masked as a... In fact, the Linux variant of kill disk ransomware, um, 
it, you can't get your files back. It never sends a, an encryption key to the C2. The next one that we're going to talk about real quick for a little bit here is Telecrypt, which is another ransomware family. Um, anybody in here speak Russian? Okay. <laughs> so Telecrypt is a ransomware family that targets Russians, uh, as, the, as you can probably figure out why, because if you got this, you would not know what... Um, Interestingly enough, though, there's a command and control interface, but they wanted you to chat with the actors over ICQ, and there's their ICQ number. <laughs> yeah. um, we thought it was interesting because they could have easily integrated that chat into uh, Telegram. Telegram itself instead of having you remember how to log into ICQ. Like, I haven't used ICQ in since, like, 95. Anybody still on it and still use it? What's your number? <laughs> Is it 714 Yeah. Uh, and a little bit later, we'll talk about some other ransomware families that we've seen that had kind of the same functionality and why they and some of the problems, and it could have made their lives easier as a ransomware actor or just a malicious person using these communication channels. So we'll get into that in a minute. Um, so this is an example of the API output uh, that Telegram, Telecrypt was using. They used the, in Telegram, it's called the get me function. They're using it as a heartbeat um, to see if the channel's still there. In later versions of Telecrypt, this was taken out of the code. And then also what they would do is do the heartbeat and then they would send a message every so often as well. Um, as you see here, the message is at the bottom, it's the text field. And it is, it's text is the computer name, which my computer's name was OICU812. And then a random string based off the UUID of the machine. And that was what was needed also for the uh, decryption of, uh, of your files. So the interesting thing about Telecrypt was it's still going on and they're still using it. The thing with um, Telegram, these channels still exist and no one, they don't remove them. So these webhooks that they're opening is no, they don't respond very well to anyone and they don't take a proactive approach and, and remove things that are obviously malicious. So. Has anybody got any questions about Telegram, Discord, or anything like that? I think we still have another couple slices of pizza if anyone else is hungry. Sir, yeah, go. Where's the network data come from? Just a PCAP from the host that I'm running on. So in these cases, it's fairly easy to um, see that it, it, this one would be easier to block just because you shouldn't be using it. <laughs> Slack's a hard one. Uh, Discord, I don't see a purpose for using it in corporations because they're trying to target gamers. And there's a lot of talk within the gaming community about using it and here's my name on Discord and things like that. Um, so they're obviously got their marketplaces, and it's very interesting to see that the ransom, or the malware families, are specifically utilizing those infrastructures, knowing. So, for an example, on um, the one that we called Rapid, which was the Bitcoin miner, it was hosting uh, that second stage malware was actually the software that overclocked the GPUs. And it's hosted in Del uh, Discord, which gamers use, which gamers have GPUs. So it's obviously a trusted, they're going after trusted um, communication paths. Also, this pro person is probably a gamer, and that's why they utilized it. So, so first, after that, if we don't have questions, we can come back. Yeah, go for it.
Yeah, so every time we've reached out to them, they've been very responsive. So the, I, I think they're doing better than Discord because you don't see malware being hosted. Um, a lot of that's because everything's usually private. You have to flag it as a public file. Um, so it's a little more difficult, but I think they're running, like some of the stuff in Discord is things that every AV flags. Like, so if they were just running it on their backend infrastructure, it'd flag it and remove it. Um, recently, on some of the things we've notify them of, they start kicking off an internal investigation about the user as well, where before they were just deleting the file, so they're, they're realizing that they have a problem and they're growing their security model. But, you know, it's a lot of these things are a couple, you know, it's an idea, that idea turns into a business, and now they're, they're slowly growing with a, a very rapid uh, growth and success that they've had. So, the, and, and Telegram, the hosted files are, there's, there's a lot of those as well. They're fairly malicious, and, and, but nothing like the volume we saw in, in Discord. Uh, with Discord, we saw specifically like key loggers that are four or five years old being hosted and things like that. So a while ago, last year, this was a big invest, big one for me, a coworker of mine that uh, is not here. Um, it's called Encryptor Raz. Uh, we only mentioned this as a case in which they could have used uh, this me method and probably be still operating. Law enforcement actually shut them down and seized their servers and stuff like that. Um, so. Why I say this as an example, as somebody who could have used it and where they could have been, is they had a chat. They implemented their own chat, and all this was hosted on uh, .onions. And their chat was to interact with the actor itself. Uh, so you could talk to them and say, like, why is this happening? How do I decrypt? Those kinds of things, and they would get back to you. So this could e easily have been done as well. And then they were also doing decryption through their custom C2 panel and things like that that they could have implemented over. As I mentioned, in June of 2016, law enforcement actually seized part of his infrastructure, and the actor managed to get some of it back up to make an announcement about what happened. And it says, I'm utterly sorry, three of my production servers were seized. It's very hard to seize a server if it is something that everyone's using. So say this was running on uh, Discord, it's harder to take it down from them. It, it's easy, I mean this guy, this guy later posted about how it cost more money for him to stand this all up than he ever made. So that's one of the reasons why he decided to shut it down. One, law enforcement was on to him. We know who he is, no one's doing anything about it though. And you can read, uh, we wrote a really good blog about this. It's called The Rise and Fall of Encryptor Raz. And he literally, the guy actually posted a Facebook post, a public one that said, I, my, my encryptor, and listed the exact details and how everything was working in Encryptor Raz. And so, like, we literally know who the guy is. Um, but, it, you know, it, if you were, an upcoming cyber criminal, you'd watch kind of the news around this and realize that this isn't good where with Telegram and Telecrypt, even though people know the API uh, key for the webhook and stuff like that, it, you, they're still not taking it down. So you can still operate even though things are flagging you as malicious and things like that, they just keep going. So that, this is a good example of that, and we have one more that we'd like to mention. Yeah, another ransomware that could have used um, H API chat platform is Jigsaw. So um, this malware is, uh, um, what it does is it encrypts your file then locks you out, and you got a timer on it. Um, once the timer expires, your um, you're gonna pay actually double on, on the original amount. The original amount was 150 US via Bitcoin, um, but once the timer expires, you're gonna pay double to decrypt your files. Um, one thing that could the attacker did was 
um, because when you um, try to contact the attacker back, um, he's going to ask you first um, how much time is left before it expires. So that's um, one indication to us that he, he didn't have any callbacks um, back to him. Um, what uh, time did a uh, machine got infected? Um, so that's uh, one, um, one mistake that he did. Also, um, he included the link on the on the ransom note um, where to contact him. So what he did was um, he used um, on web chat application, um, a platform um, to contact him back. So he needs to set up a CNC first, then he needs to upload the, his PHP file there. He needs to contact them, contact him there. So what could have he, uh, what could have been done was he could have integrated a chat platform on his um, beautiful lock screen. Um, and there you can chat there and also um, he could have gotten a ping back when, when the machine has been infected so that um, any, uh, any victim could not lie about um, the timer on, on the display. So um, we did contact um, on web chat um, here and they quickly took down the account um before we reported to on web chat we crawled a bit on the on the attacker um we tried to lowball him on the price because um we, we just tried to lowball him and he agreed to pay uh he agreed for us to pay like 75 us <laughs> so he's desperate um and apparently um what we've known about him is he's living in New York, um, and that's it. So, uh, as just kind of wrap it up, uh, is that as we mentioned before, chat platforms, APIs are being heavily utilized today. Uh, it's ever growing, especially as people find that they can make more meme bots than they need. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, Slack uh, is in 70% of Fortune 100s. Um, criminals are using specific chat forms uh, to target their ho to. Wow, that's horrible wording. Uh, to you know, they're using the specific chat platforms for their targets and gearing it towards the the right uh, market, I guess. Uh, and it is really hard to stop. Uh, a lot of this is over TLS, so you can't even see the as it goes across the wire, you know, the specific uh, t API key or things like that. And you can't even um, compare which one are the uh, normal traffic and which one are the CNC traffic. Yeah, it, unless you're doing deep packet inspection with SSL stripping. So. At that point in time, we'll open it up to all and any questions. And if you want more information or need anything from us other than pizza, there's only a couple more pieces up here. Um, feel free to ask us questions and we're here for you. What's up? It's Russia. Uh, if I remember right, it's a Russian company. Any other questions? Yeah. So that was on Wireshark from the host. So it was an SSL encrypted. So you, you can see parts uh, of the, the, you know, the host name and stuff like that, but the, the payloads themselves are encrypted, of course. Any other questions? Alex, I know you're itching. Yeah, you got any? Thanks, Alex. No, one more there, then Brian. I'm sure that could be implemented on their their stance. 
uh, maybe. Uh, I, I'm not down with that level of how that works with, the, with these applications. Anything else? Yes. No. I don't know of anything at this point in time. Brian, you got one? You sure? You're itching. All right, cool. Mike, you got any? All right. Valentine? No? All right. Well, I appreciate it. If anyone has any questions that want to come up, go ahead.